Hi everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, just welcome. Uh, what we got here is a 20, I think it's a 16, 16 or 17 uh, Dodge Durangus. And uh, the customer was here the other day. Uh, one of the other fellas did an inspection on it and uh, found that it has a power steering leak. And uh, that guy is not here today but the customer is back to have this leak repaired. So I am going to uh, just uh, scoop up this gravy job right here and uh, get this uh, rack replaced. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a good video. Alrighty, I was a little off. Uh, an inspection of the, uh, the build date on this indicates that this is a 2014 Durangus, not a 16, 17, or an 18. And it appears to be equipped with the 3.6 liter uh, v6 variety up she goes all right moving down under let's see what we're looking at here oh yep yeah this is the power steering gear right here and uh i do believe there is some fluid dripping yep she's got a leak definitely some dripping off the subframe right here okay let's get the wheels off and uh unbolt this thing and get it out of here Okay, I have removed the wheels from both sides. Um, I'm gonna start just by pulling off these uh, outer tie rods. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, break these jam luts nuts loose as well, just in case I have to unthread these tie rods to get the rack to slide out. I don't think I will. There appears to be quite a bit of space in there, but um, just in case, I'll go ahead and break these loose right now. No need for the angry pliers, so I busted out the smaller version of said angry pliers. I haven't nicknamed these ones yet. Uh, maybe I'll call them frustrated pliers. There we go. That's one. And I'll just impact off this tie rod nut right here. Easy peasy. I'm going to thread this down ever so slightly and just give this a tappy tap with a linear impact driver to uh, separate it from the steering knuckle. Okay, that didn't work and I don't want to get too violent with it. Um, so, I will uh, just uh, use the uh, ball joint slash tie rod separator tool and uh, press it out of, uh, out of the knuckle. That worked. No, wrong way. And I'll put that back on so I don't lose it. And we'll swing around to the other side. Hmm. Sweet. I like this tool. I don't want to pry on the rubber boot or tear it. So I'm trying to push it down. scary watching that tool flex. I didn't want it to grenade in my face. I forgot to break that jam nut loose. No worries. I can just circle back sake style. Gravity. Moving back up. Alrighty, so the first thing I want to do is get this steering shaft disconnected. And if we follow the shaft up, we can see that there's a collar. And there's one bolt. Let's change the light. There's one bolt that passes through that collar. 
and it clips the collar onto the shaft. So we're going to pull that bolt right there and uh, slide everything up and that'll allow us to disconnect this rack and pull it out. All right. I believe that's a Torx 50 fastener up there. Hmm. You guys are in the way. Hang on a minute. Can't break it loose. Need a ratchet. Let's try this. The teeth on that electric ratchet were not fine enough. That actually might be a 55. No, it's a Torx 50. It just kind of felt sloppy in there. Here, we'll give it a running start and just send it. It's a great way to get your tools warrantied. Yeah, that's the head of the fastener. Okay, a little bit of pry bar up and some hammer tappy tap action. And that thing should slide off of the shaft. There it goes. It's free. Oh yeah, okay. Um, let's see, now we're looking at two 24 millimeter bolts right here on the subframe and two hydraulic lines. And uh, we're ready to pull this thing out. Yep, 24s. All right, loud noises warning. Sprayed something on me. Water from inside of the inside of the bolt area. Okay, there are nuts at the top of this, I believe. Yeah. I'll have to go in there with a wrench and hold them. Okay, so I don't want to speak too soon and shoot myself in the foot. Oh that flung on my face. But uh, for some reason, the service manual on this car, the labor guide, yeah, look at all that. The labor guide says that this job is supposed to take 5.6 hours to do. And uh, I'm thinking I might clock in on this uh, with about uh, two hours tops, plus a half hour to do a wheel alignment. So I'm, I'm not really sure what, what's up with that. If the labor guide is inaccurate or I'm going to run into a very large obstacle that I'm not able to see right now. I'm, I'm really not certain, but uh, I guess we'll figure that out later. Maybe they factored in shower time to get all the flung rust water off of your face. Okay, so that's free with the exception of these, uh, these hard lines over here. Um, I believe those are gonna be an 18 mil. They look like they're both 18s. So let's go grab a stubby wrench or a line wrench or something and get to work on these two lines right here. Uh, so correction, I'm not gonna use a line wrench. I don't feel the need to. I can get a regular wrench on those fasteners uh, with no problem, so a line wrench would just be uh, an unnecessary tool right now. Those are for when you can't really fit a regular wrench on. You stick your line wrench over the hose, or the, the, the hard line, and then slide it down to, uh, to get a better bite on, on the fastener. Uh, that's not, uh, not really going to be the case with this one. I can very easily access both of these fittings. So unpacking the line wrenches is not necessary. Uh, therefore, I will not be doing it. Okay, there's one. That one's uh, mostly out of the way. I can get to the fastener on the, on the next one now. Semantics, I know it's a fitting, not a fastener. but I'll call it whatever. All right. OK, 
Okay, it's disconnected and free of everything. Let's uh, see what we can do to, to get it out. I think, um, uh, I think I see why it takes five hours. There's no space to get that shaft past this part of the subframe. I don't think. Okay, that, that may slightly complicate things. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I can get it to come out. Well, I knew it. I knew this was uh, too good to be true and it wasn't gonna be as easy as it looked. Engineers, this is why no one likes you. Could have probably had this do job done by now. But look at that, see how long that shaft is? It doesn't make it past this uh, engine mount right here. I can't go that way to rotate it to get clearance. And I can't bring it down anymore because the subframe's in the way. But what you could have done was made this shaft shorter, made that other shaft longer. Thing pops off, it comes right out, no problem, a third of the time. But you guys, in all of your infinite wisdom, decided to do this clown show of an engineering job. We wonder why we curse you. This is bull crap. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it in half. I'll get this thing out of here. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not doing this the super hard way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to get this thing out of here. It's it's gonna happen. I'm not taking the subframe down to do it. I'm just gonna wiggle everything until it does what I want. I know there's a way. If I flip it upside down. Yeah, I'll go through that little mount tab thing. Make more space. Is this gonna work? No. And the guy who designed it, he's sitting somewhere laughing, going, ah, almost. Almost, you, you almost got it. But you won't. See the other mount stuck over here on this side, on the right. You know what? I bet if I remove the inner tie rod, I'll have enough uh, enough space to get this thing out. Yeah, I think I'll try that next. I'm gonna pull this boot off and disconnect this inner tie rod, and then uh, see if I can get this thing to come out of here. Okay. Let's lose this little. Oh, there's a leak. All right, let's get out of here. I think it best if I pull this tie rod off right here and get this boot removed. Yeah, this was almost easy. Almost. Okay, I want to push this shaft in so I can come up through here and get a grip on that with the angry pliers. So, I will utilize leverage to do my bidding. Oh, I won't. It's stuck on the other side. Okay, I just got it unstuck. There we go. Five hours. Nonsense, five hours. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There's the inner workings of an inner tie rod. It's just a, a ball and socket joint. Thread it on, and then the inner rod is free to turn as the outer articulates on the steering knuckle. Okay, let's go back down under 
and see if we generated enough space or made this part small enough where I can wiggle it out. Or uh, worst case scenario is I wedged it in and now it won't go anywhere. Hmm. Still have no space. I mean, I have more space, but it's still not gonna go anywhere. Let's see, strategy, strategy, strategy. What to do? What to do? Well, I'm just gonna take the other tie rod off too. And uh, then maybe, then maybe, we'll, we'll see. All right, let's see, this clamp's gotta go just like the other one. And just like the other side, I had to run the rack in to uh, get a straight line access with the pliers. If this does not work, I'm going to become moderately frustrated and borderline agitated. And to make things worse, my, my rubber ripped and I haven't stopped. But can sometimes lead to problems. Okay, it moves more. Ow. But not much more. Okay, this is kind of backed into a corner right here with uh, what to do next. I'm gonna take five and, and uh, gather my thoughts. All right, I've taken a moment to collect myself and where I'm at right now, this thing's not gonna go or come out. So I'm gonna try to start back over from where I started. And I'll go a different way now that I've made this part smaller. Ha. All right, I have, I got this stupid long shaft out of the way. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself because I thought I had already won more than once on this. Hmm. Okay, it's not gonna, subframe still in the way, it's not gonna come down like that either. Maybe I can come out this way with it. And if I turn it upside down, yeah. You know, a lot of you guys ask me if I ever go back and review footage on, on how I took these things apart in order to figure out how to put them back together. And I, I usually don't, but I think on this one I'm gonna have to, because I had to I just had to zigzag this thing left and right all over the place to get it out. It's it's out. I won, but I, I'm not not very happy about how this this went down. This could have been better. This could have been done much better. Silly thing. Whatever though, it's out. Uh, now I just gotta wait for my new one to get here, and uh, I'll try to flip it upside down, take it apart, move it forward, move it back, assemble it halfway in the car, and then. And uh, then maybe it'll go back to where it goes. You know, I was, for a split second, I thought to myself, I could just sawzall this bracket off right here and things should slide out no problem. But um, I did not really want to be the guy who's taking a, a chopping disc uh, to a subframe. I could have got away with it, but I didn't. I believe this is a bracket for a, uh, a differential on a, maybe a four wheel drive version. Um, it does absolutely nothing uh, on this version but uh, I still didn't want to chop pieces of the car off to make my life easier. Okay, I have uh, no doubt angered the car gods because although I may have cheated the system to remove the steering rack, I uh, 
won't be cheating it to get the new one in. Maybe. I know I can just disassemble this one the same way I did the first one. Oops. Sorry if my head was in the way. I know I can disassemble this one the same way I did the, the first one to get it out, but I really don't want to break those clamps loose. Um, I'm going to try to get this in without taking it apart, but I believe I'm going to have to uh, take this one apart the same way. Uh, let's see. Let's move back up to where the work zone is right here and uh, let's see about maneuvering this device into its new home. I mean, I don't know. It, it might it might not happen, but it also just might. We'll see. I think it is going in. Now I'm loud noises. It's actually going to annoy me a lot if this goes in without disassembly because I couldn't get it the other one out. And that will that will indeed confuse me slightly. Man, you gotta be kidding me. It's going right in. How did I screw that up so bad? I'm trying to get this out. I'm, I have no idea. You guys saw it. It was it was not it was not doing what I wanted it to do. Oh well. Okay, I think a little more maneuvering. Man, look at that. Unbelievable. I did all that fighting and this thing went right in. I'm absolutely unbelievable. Well, this is cool. This job's uh, definitely in the home stretch now. And I, I do believe I will be beating the, beating the clock by a lot, which is good. There's the next one. Let's apply some duck -a ducks and uh, bolt this guy down. Hmm, looks like I bent that, that thing a little bit. Oh no, it just came out of the grommet. Oh, I've got it bungeed back. That's what's going on. Nothing to worry about. Okay. I'm gonna have to unbungee it. Because I can't reach through there and get a hold of the nut there loud Sunshiny day. What? So the car gods and I are playing a game of chicken. Seeing as how this is a dealership part, they did not give me replacement o-rings for these lines right here that came with the steering rack so i'm gonna go into my generic kit and uh see if i have one uh, that is of suitable size and girth that will be appropriate for this application okay i uh, was able to find uh, two exact size replacement o-rings for these lines Did that make it? Yeah, it did. Okay. There's one and numero dos. Okay. All right, let's move around the front here and 
get a good view on these lines and get these lines uh, screwed in and attached and torqued down. guys if I'm blocking the view I gotta fit my hand into the into the space here there we go got it I've got two little brackets on these lines, uh, grommets if you will, bushings, whatever, that need to be screwed down. Hmm, I cannot reach. There. Click. Okay, we have a splash shield to put on and outer tie rods and then we're good here. Okay, we're still on the bottom of the car. Uh, this is the driver's front fender. And I've just got to thread this tie rod in. And we will repeat on the other side. Let's get over there. Well, I can say this has gone to better, or gone back together much easier than it came apart. I don't know what that was, but Juan did it. Loud noises. One more to go. We're done so. Here is finished except for a fluid refill up top. No, I'm just kidding. There's the uh, there's the kill people bolt that we forgot to install. The one where the steering shaft comes off and kills people. Okay, next we need to uh, get this sleeve back on. This is the most critical part, especially the bolt that holds it in. You can see from the bottom of this collar that there are notches that taken out of that shaft, so it can only really go on one way. The trouble is I can't really reach it very well to set it up for alignment. I just have to fiddle with it for a bit. I think that's that's not it yet. We're getting there. Almost. Just gotta wiggle it till the shaft slides in. I think I got it in position. Yeah, I can, I can feel the shaft on the other end of the collar. Uh, let's run the bolt through there and tighten this down. 
and uh, we're done with uh, this operation. All right, guys, well. Okay, the GoPro's in the way, so I gotta move you guys back some. But it's time to uh, tighten this bolt down a little bit. I turned the shaft some to get a better angle for this ratchet dangle here. Click. And I'll finish it off manually with the ratchet. There we go, click. We're good. All right, guys, well, with the exception of that fluid that I have to refill, this thing is about done. Um, I'm not gonna do the alignment on this. I'm gonna hand this off to somebody else because I've gotta switch gears a little bit and move over to a different car. Uh, we're trying to get a lot of stuff done today and we're definitely in catch-up mode. So uh, I'm kind of letting the, uh, the easy work uh, get handled by some of the other fellas and I'm going through the, uh, the more challenging operations right now. Uh, just so we, like I said, so we can make a bit of a progress to get this stuff Normally, done. Normally I don't like to play musical technicians when it comes to cars, uh, but since we're in a bit of a crunch, we're using everybody's strengths to the, uh, the store's advantage uh, just to achieve a, a higher standard of efficiency. All that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out. Uh, before I go, uh, naturally I'd like to thank everybody here for watching, especially since uh, if you're hearing this, you've made it all the way to the end. If you have made it all the way to the end, I'm assuming that you enjoyed this video and would, uh, would like to see more like it. If that's the case, please feel free to communicate to me that you did enjoy this video by tapping tap that thumbs up button. Doing that lets me and YouTube know that I have done a good job. And if YouTube thinks that I have done a good job, they are far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me and good for them. Of course, on the inverse, if you did not like what you saw in this video or something that I did or said in this video, please feel free to test your theory in the comment section down below. And of course, before I go, I have to remind myself to not forget to remind you guys to not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys in the next one. Click. By the way, shameless plug, Amazon link for uh, angry and frustrated pliers down below in the description. See you there. See you later, Doge.